Who gets what? Death and divorce. Is there anything more stressful than dealing with death and divorce? My name's Rachel King. I'm an attorney. And today on Gavels Down, Voices Up, we're going to talk all about what you get in death and what you get in divorce and what happens when you die during your divorce. Welcome to Gavels Down, Voices Up with me, Rachel King. This is where we leave convention at the courtroom door and dive into your real stories, bold and unpopular opinions, and change-making ideas that really shake the legal world up and change where change is desperately needed. I'm here to shake it up, talk about unfiltered insights, and amplify voices that need to be heard. So are you ready? Let's get it. Put the gavels down and the voices up. Mind blown. It is not what you're expecting. So when you are married, you acquire assets. We all do. And you acquire debts. And depending on what state you're in will kind of depend on the laws as to who gets what. But I'm going to talk generally California law today and how it works here. Of course, you want to talk to any attorney in your area because you know what's come to my attention? I practice in California, Kentucky, Arizona, and Texas, and I've talked to plenty of attorneys in all the other states. And one thing that is true is that none of the laws are exactly the same. And what you might get in California could be totally different than what you would get in Texas or in Nebraska or Massachusetts or wherever it is that you are getting divorced. And did you know that where you get divorced can be different than where you get married? That's right. It's because it's a jurisdictional issue. So maybe you get married in Alaska and you get divorced in California because that's where you're living when you get divorced. Maybe one of you lives in New York and another one of you lives in Texas during your divorce. Wherever it's filed and wherever the court has jurisdiction, those are going to be the laws that are in place. And where you file for divorce absolutely matters, but you also may not have control over it. So when you are married in a community property state, such as California, and I'm really only speaking to California because that's where I primarily practice, everything that you acquire during marriage is community property, unless it's a gift or it's inheritance, right? So if you acquire it during the marriage, regardless of whose name it's in, it's going to be a marital asset and it's typically going to be divided equally. The same is true of debt. So if you acquire a debt during the marriage, arguably, even if it's on your credit card, you're going to both be responsible for the debt that you come into the marriage with or that you acquire after date of separation or again, inheritance or gifts. That is separate property and typically you get to leave with your separate property. There are some times, actually, they're getting more and more common where a separate property asset has a community property interest, and now we end up fighting over what the values of each are. But the bottom line is that when we're talking about property division in a divorce, we're really talking about what did you have before, what did you acquire after, whose name is it in, and how are we going to allocate that? And in California, you have an equal right to that house. House is in husband's name. No worries. It was acquired during marriage. Both of you contributed to the mortgage. When that gets divided through the divorce, probably it's going to be equal, even though it's in husband's name. Here's a kicker. Here's one that I came across recently. Student loans are typically separate property. Okay. So wife paid off all of husband's student loans with her credit card during the marriage. Husband had acquired these student loans prior to getting married. And then again, even if he'd gotten them during the marriage, typically they're considered separate property. So now wife has put them on her credit card during the marriage. So they become community property debt. That means she's on the hook what? For half of these student loans that she otherwise wouldn't be able to. 
In this case, wife went in and showed all of the paperwork, got all of the transcripts for the financial records for husband's student loans, had exact dollar amounts and payments on the credit card statements showing what it was. And the court had enough discretion in this case to go ahead and say, yep, even though it's a credit card debt that was acquired during the marriage, it was really for the benefit of husband. It would have otherwise been his separate property, but wife wanted to pay it off. So all of it was allocated to husband. Wife got an offset for it. That is great, great news. I've had other situations where the 401k was entirely a community asset. That's right. Got married, started contributing to the 401k, all of the income. So even if it's in wife's name, it's still a community property asset that's subject to be divided during the divorce. Somewhere in the middle of the marriage, prior to divorce, wife goes in, pulls all of the 401k out doesn't tell husband and goes and uses it for who knows what, right? We didn't get into the details. I wasn't paying that much attention. It was a different case, not one that I was on. So husband comes around divorce at the divorce time 15 years later and says, hey, wait a second. What happened to that 401k you've been contributing to? I want half. And wife came in and said, oh, it's gone. I don't know where it went. I don't know where it went. In that particular case, the court said, I'm sorry, it's gone. Why did the court say that? Even though wife took it without husband's permission and it was community property because it had happened 15 years ago. So husband had 15 years to figure out that this had happened and he didn't. Okay. Let's rewind a little bit and say husband filed for divorce shortly thereafter and wife had done away with it and maybe used it to gamble. That would arguably be enough for a court to come in and say, yeah, wife, you owe husband half of the value of that 401k. So when we're looking at divorce, we're taking all of the assets that you started with that are separate, all of the assets that are community that you created or earned during all of the debts, and we're giving them back doesn't really matter whose name they're in. We're going to split them. In real life, oftentimes agreements are reached where one person will take a whole asset and the other person will take a whole debt or something like that to equalize it out. Now, what happens if you die? So in divorce, we're trying to make everybody equal and, and separate out the marriage, right? Going from married business relationship to single, no business relationship. That looks a lot different than death. In death, we still care in California about whether they're community or separate property assets, but it isn't an equal division. You can have a will and that will allow you to leave your assets to whomever you wish and not fall under the law. But I just litigated a huge case where husband created a will and left all of his assets to his mistress. Now, keep in mind, wife was not aware that husband was having this affair, didn't know anything about it. And all of the husband's assets, all of the assets that husband was uh, alleging were his, were community property. They were all acquired during the marriage with the income of both parties. Yeah, they might have been in husband's name, but that doesn't mean, as we just heard, that they're all husband's asset. And he gets to go in and leave a will, leaving them to a mistress? Nope. In that case, the court came in and said, you know what? You can leave half of your community property. So you're entitled to half of the community property, like if you were getting divorced. And so that's the only amount that you can will away. You can will it away to a mistress if you want to, or a charity or whatever. And actually, your spouse doesn't have to know about it. But you're only allowed to give away half. So in this very litigated, super expensive, very high conflict case, the wife ended up getting half of husband's assets, but they weren't really husband's, right? It was her assets that she was entitled to. And talk about giving your wife the middle finger. I mean, could he have made a bigger mess of it? I'm not quite sure he could. Now, here's something also that's a little bit different. In death... Your separate property that in divorce your spouse would not have gotten, your spouse has a right to. Of course, you can give away 100% of your separate property. So if you get an inheritance from your parents and you're like, "Ah, I love my husband, but I really want to keep this all in the bloodline, so I'm going to give 100% of my inheritance to my children, 
totally okay. You're allowed to do it. It's your own separate property. But let's say you don't make that will. You're just silent to it. You get a $20 million inheritance because that sounds super fun, right? What are you going to do with it? You don't do anything, but you do keep it separate property. When you die, your husband or your wife gets to come in and take part of it because that's what the law says. In death, it's different than divorce. In divorce, you're entitled to an equal share of all of the community property and half of the debts, or you're responsible for half of the debts, and you get to keep your own separate property. In death, maybe it's because we're presuming that everybody still loved each other or got along. Your spouse is entitled to community property and separate property assets. If you don't do anything about it, you don't leave a will or a trust or anything, then we follow the laws. And the law says spouse gets community property and some of the separate property. That's right. And now for a quick break. This episode of Gavels Down, Voices Up is proudly brought to you by King Law Firm, Attorneys at Law Incorporated. We're not just about winning cases, we're about making a difference. Whether it's family law, probate litigation, or standing up against elder abuse, we bring experience, empathy, and excellence to the courtroom. At King Law Firm, we're more than lawyers. We're your team in your corner, advocating for your rights and making your voice heard. Visit us at thelawyerking.com and on the socials at The Lawyer King to see how we fight with you and for you. King Law Firm Attorneys at Law Incorporated, where your fight becomes our fight. Now, let's get back to today's episode. Now, here's the kicker. What happens if you file for divorce but you die in the middle of the proceedings. Had you asked me this question while I was going through law school prior to my over a decade worth of family law experience, I would have said, how often does that happen? Now we fast forward all of these years later, I've represented hundreds, if not thousands of cases. And I can tell you it's happened way more than I thought. Probably between six and 12 times during a divorce that I was handling, the spouse died. And that isn't even all the people that aren't represented by attorneys or all of the people that are going through family law cases that I'm not working on their cases. I think that's a huge amount and it throws a wrench in everything. Here's why. Under a divorce, we have family law code. Under death, we have the probate code and they're not the same. So in a divorce, you get it a certain way. But the only thing that confirms that community property or separate property to wife or to husband is the final judgment. And if you're still going through the final judgment or you haven't entered final judgment, you're still arguing over who's going to get what, what spousal support is going to be, whether the house is community or separate property, you haven't entered final judgment. And if you haven't entered final judgment, we don't actually know by confirmation that everything has been separate property or is confirmed to you. There's no waiver of right to inherit. So you die and your spouse that you hate, that you're going through a brutal divorce, or maybe not even brutal. Maybe you just don't like them anymore. That's why you're filing for divorce. You got it. It's going to revert to the California probate code. And you're going to be having your spouse, your ex-spouse, your shitty spouse, get community property and separate property assets. Oh my God, that's so awful. How many people call me as a California certified specialist in probate and say, my mom filed for divorce, died during the divorce process, and now husband and his kids are coming in trying to usurp everything that she was going to get, her half of everything. And there's no updated will and there's no nothing. And the will leaves everything to husband because it was created during the marriage when they loved each other. Guess what's going to control? That stinking will. That soon-to-be ex-spouse or soon-to-be-was ex-spouse is going to get everything. I don't know how I feel about that, except that it makes me think, huh, you should really make sure your estate planning documents are on point and where they need to be so that the right people inherit. And especially if you're going through a divorce and you don't like your ex, but you previously had a will that says they were going to inherit everything. Maybe, maybe time to go in and update that and at least give away your half to the people that you want. Here is the closing 
horror story. Wife and husband married for 50 years. They had children together. They aged together the whole nine yards. Husband, I guess, had an extramarital affair sometime early on in the marriage that resulted in a child. Husband had no idea, never cheated again. Maybe he lived and learned, but he didn't know about this child. 23 and Me comes along and husband, I don't know, decided maybe it would be fun to do it. Did it, nothing came up, all clear. He's like, oh, cool, I'm, you know, 2% whatever. A few years later, apparently daughter, the estranged daughter, the unknown daughter decides to do 23andMe. And now it happens. Bam, we've got a match. She found dad. The system links them up. She reaches out to dad. Dad's like, oh my gosh, I had no idea. He's feeling very guilty for a whole bunch of reasons because he wasn't dad to this child, because he has to break the news to his wife, because he has to tell his children, his other children that this happened. Nonetheless, he wants to be the stand-up guy after all of these years. And so he tries to create a relationship with his daughter. Turns out daughter's not such a great gal. She comes in and she starts really putting a lot of heavy undue influence on him to leave her everything, to get under his skin. And he's feeling so guilty that he starts buying into it. Meanwhile, wife of 50 years and children are so shocked they don't know what to do. And wife is like, you know what? I'm not going to be married anymore. This is just too much. And so she, after all of these years, files for divorce. That daughter, she's still in the picture and she's saying everything. All of it is hers. He needs to get 100% of what he's entitled to. She's really pushing this divorce. Then mom gets dementia. Maybe she had it. I don't know. It gets to a point where she can no longer care for herself. She doesn't want her husband to care for her because he cheated on her and they're going for a horrific divorce. She also doesn't trust daughter over there. So she says, okay, our joint child, a joint adult child is going to take care of me. Neutral party, right? Dad loved their joint children. But now that uh, daughter, daughter's gotten in his ear, he's thinking everybody sucks and everybody's after him. Daughter has husband come in and do a whole new estate plan, gives her everything. Wife doesn't think too much about it. Wife dies. Wife's estate plan gave everything to husband. And because she hadn't updated it, everything went to husband because they weren't legally divorced yet. So husband takes everything and then husband dies very soon after. Maybe it was from a broken heart. Who knows? They'd been together for a long time. He didn't get to say goodbye to his wife. He had to love her. He dies and guess who walks away with everything? You got it. The estranged daughter, not wife, not their joint children, nothing. This person who came in and weaseled her way, likely participating in undue influence, though that wasn't litigated, got everything. So there's a difference between who gets what, death and divorce, and there can be nightmare situations. Let's learn from everybody else's mistakes and start protecting our own stuff and setting it up so that what we want happen actually does. My name's Rachel King. I'm a strategic litigator. I am a California certified specialist in probate estate planning and trusts. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me. And until next time, thanks for tuning in to Gavels Down Voices Up. Like what you heard? Then don't just sit there. Subscribe, share, and tell me your thoughts. I'm Rachel King, bringing not just my opinions to the mic, but about the courtroom too. Your part, keep listening, keep engaging. And until next time, let's keep those gavels down and our voices up, unmistakably up.